will discuss the seeds of discontentment in marriage and how to deal with them. There are many unhappy marriages today and many marriages that are struggling. And it all started with a seed of discontentment. This opens the door to many problems in marriage, including the big one called adultery. Remember that every flood begins with raindrops. If you don't deal with discontentment, a flood of problems will become the story of your marriage. Seeds of discontentment are the devil's specialty. Many people are dissatisfied with their marriages because you go into marriage with expectations and many times you are disappointed with the reality of it. Anyone who's ever been married will tell you that marriage takes work. You both have to work at it to make it what you truly want it to be. You also have to recognize that marriage is in seasons. Do you feel the same way about life in the winter as you do in the summer? Sometimes you miss that old feeling where you were living in the discovery of newfound love and you and your spouse were all about each other in your own world. Now marriage has given you a reality check. Where before that lovey-dovey feeling was effortless, you now have to intentionally create it so that it stays alive. Children, financial stress, various changes in your marriage. Sometimes it gets too comfortable, sometimes it gets too predictable and you feel that you have lost that excited feeling. You feel that there must be something more. Adultery starts with a seed of discontentment. All of a sudden, or maybe not all of a sudden, you just realize that you are no longer happy or satisfied with your spouse. So you start to look for other options. Some decide to step out of marriage to to fill that void that is lacking, that they have found lacking in their spouse. So they go outside the marriage and find someone else that makes them feel, feel good. That is a selfish act. That is a destructive act. That person that's making you feel good about yourself, if you leave your marriage for that person, you will find yourself back where you are trying to run away from it. No one can keep that emotional high that you're looking for forever. The love in marriage must be sacrificial. It must be cultivated. You must both invest in each other. It takes the love of God to keep your marriage working. This is why I always emphasize the two of you, husband and wife, having a relationship with the Lord, drawing near to the and relying on the Lord each and every step of the way because the devil is coming to mess with you. The devil wants your marriage to be destroyed. Don't let him use you to destroy your marriage. You see, the devil makes you dissatisfied. It's a seed of discontentment. It's the same thing that happened with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. That was his angle. God has given you everything. There is something that God did not give you. Why don't you go after it? Why don't you taste it? And that's how Adam and Eve lost the Garden of Eden and all the good things the Lord had for them in the Garden of Eden. It's the same thing that the devil does to marriages. Marriage is your Garden of Eden. It has so many blessings within it but you have a responsibility to guard your marriage. And you can only guard your marriage by the grace and power of God. It is only God that can overcome the enemy. That's why you and your spouse must have a strong relationship with the Lord. Lean on God for his wisdom to make things better for the two of you. You know, there is a saying that the grass is greener on the other side. But there are snakes in every grass. In your marriage, you know the weaknesses. You know how to navigate the weaknesses of your marriage through prayer, through wisdom. However, adultery is an illusion. 
the devil will present someone to you as a better option and you start building your hopes and dreams upon that person. But uh, it looks good, right? It looks good. Let me go over there. Let me taste that forbidden fruit, just like Adam and Eve decided to do. And what happened to them? Destruction came their way. There are snakes in every grass. That person that looks so good, that person that looks as a better option to your spouse, also has weaknesses, also has things attached to that person that are not visible to you. And when you throw your marriage away because of an adulterous relationship. Destruction, destruction, destruction. Any issue that you have with your spouse, take it to God and ask him to help you. Pray and ask for the Lord's help with your marriage. God created marriage and God is available to help you with your marriage. Also, ask God to remove certain desires in you so that if your spouse never fulfills those desires, you will be more than okay. It is through those unfulfilled desires that seeds of discontentment are sown by the devil. What seed is the devil sowing in your heart and your mind today? Don't give in to them. Stand strong on God's word. Marriage is a lot of things, but I personally believe that it is also a master plan designed by God for you to make heaven. Who on earth will hurt you or drive you crazy more than your spouse and your children? Where else can you truly learn unconditional love and forgiveness? Marriage done right. Marriage God's way will bring out the character of Christ in you. And being a Christian is about being Christ-like. So, when the character of Christ is brought out in you, heaven is very possible. That's why the enemy fights marriage a lot, because if you can get your marriage right and let God mold you in your marriage, you will make heaven. It is a testing ground for the love of Christ to come forth in you. And many of us lack the love of Christ. That is why marriages are crashing all over the world. If you have the love of Christ, you can get through anything. Performance management in marriage is very important. This is something that is done in the corporate world where your boss will review how you have worked all year with you. It can be quarterly, it can be twice a year, it can be annually. Everyone has the ability to improve. Don't relax and just assume that your marriage is doing well. Even if it is doing well, strive to make it do better. You must sit down with your spouse and ask each other, how are you doing? Ask your husband, husband, how am I doing as your wife? Is there anything? that I can be doing better? Is there anything that I am not doing well? Husband, ask your wife the same question. Let us lay aside every pride. Let us lay aside the fear of criticism. Let us not be offended if our spouse is disappointed in us. The importance of feedback, the importance of performance management is to improve. You should be able to talk to your spouse about anything and everything, even the areas that you are disappointed in. Those seeds of discontentment must be talked about. Performance management in your marriage will help the two of you move your marriage to a better place, from better to better, also from worse to better. You cannot assume that all is well. Stop internalizing and express yourselves to each other. The devil thrives in a mind that internalizes. He will be talking to you in your mind and allow you to jump to the worst conclusions. Every action taken starts in your mind. You must protect your mind with prayers and seeking God's wisdom. You have to make up your mind to stand on God's word and please your Father in heaven. Strife 
is not pleasing to God. When you have a disagreement in your marriage, when you have conflict in your marriage, the Lord expects you to come to a peaceful resolution. And seeds of discontentment, they pile up. They pile up if you internalize. Suddenly you're comparing your spouse to other people out there and you are just not happy. And the devil is speaking to you and telling you that you can be happier if you throw your marriage away or you go into an adulterous relationship and so forth and so forth. Please rebuke the voice of the devil. The devil comes to steal and destroy. And marriage is a major target for the enemy. He wants to take your peace away from you. He wants to take your joy away from you. And where, where is that really located? In your family environment, in your marriage, in the home that you have created. Either being as a child or when you grow up and being married to someone. The home is being attacked by the enemy a lot. So don't let the devil use you. Know when he comes and whispers doubtful words to you, rebuke him with the word of God. Stand upon the word of God and believe that your marriage can be better. When a seed of discontentment is sown by the enemy, ask God to weed those seeds out immediately because seeds grow. Every plant that you see, every tree that you see started out with a seed. Don't let that little problem become a big problem in your marriage. It is so important to communicate. It is so important to pray. It is so important to keep nurturing each other in love. It is very important to also understand the seasons of marriage. You must be committed in the good times, in the bad times. Remember those vows that you took? You must be committed and stay prayerful through it all. Do not compromise your faith for so-called greener pastures. There's a price to pay when you decide to dance with the devil and do things the devil's way. God's love is free. Even when you are unloving, God still loves you. And that's why you need that love in your marriage because sometimes you really don't feel loved by your spouse. It will happen. Maybe your spouse is focused on Sometimes you're so focused on building your career that you can neglect your family just a little. Sometimes it goes a long way. That's why a performance management is so important so that you can go back away from that and say to yourself, I am neglecting my family because I'm trying to build a career. I need to stop this and go back to the drawing board and see how I can balance being a husband and a father also a wife and a mother so that the family is not being neglected or suffering. You must know what you want and fight for it. You wanted to get married, right? So fight for your marriage. What are you not happy about? What is not working for you? Communicate, let your spouse know, talk about it, pray about it, Seek counseling. There's nothing wrong with seeking counseling. Be committed to your marriage. Invest in your marriage. One of the best things you can do as a married couple is to attend marriage seminars together. Read books on marriage together. Pray together. Stay close every day intentionally. Be close to each other. Don't let there be a gap between the two of you. Talk about anything and everything. That is the closest person to you on earth. Don't let anyone ever take the place of your spouse. If you find yourself opening up to another human being more than your spouse, shut it down. You need to address why you are comfortable talking about intimate things with, with another person that your spouse has no idea about. You need to assess it and understand that you have gone out of the bounds of marriage and you need to ask the Lord for wisdom and for you to go back to the drawing board and to be committed to your spouse. Don't let anyone get between you and your spouse. That's how a seed of discontentment thrives and grows and in the end destroys marriages. Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 15 
Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Those little foxes are the seeds of discontentment in your marriage. You must catch them. They want to destroy your marriage. You must catch those negative thoughts. Those negative thoughts become negative actions. Catch them before they become actions. Catch them and destroy them in the place of prayer, in the place of meditating on the word of God. I am telling you, you must fight for your marriage because the devil is fighting you every day. The devil wants your marriage to fail. Don't give in. Rise up and pray. Talk to your spouse. Seek counseling. Get all the help that you can get and your marriage will thrive and you will destroy every evil plan of the enemy against your marriage in the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching. If this video has been a blessing to you, hit the like button, stay subscribed and share. God loves you and I love you. God bless you. Thank you.